So I am going to talk about the four fat disorders. I am going to do a little bit of a focus on lipidema and Jokum's disease, but uh, before I do that, I did this a little bit um, last night, but I just wanted to mention again that the FDRS was established in 2009 uh, by a couple of patients and myself. And at that time, we didn't have the luxury of Facebook groups. So, uh, you know, it would have been nice at that time to have that, but um, here we are now. Um, the FDRS was established on the four fat disorders because I believe that there are similarities between them, although there are significant differences. And they've all been neglected and underdiagnosed. And research, I feel, in any of the fat disorders has the potential of helping all the fat disorders. And this is the, a diagram um, put together by Felicity and Linda Weisner and myself, uh, mostly uh, driven by Felicity. And I think it's a great diagram. It does show uh, overlap between the disorders very nicely, and you can see that on our website and all over your pads of paper. And if you're on the table and out there. And by the way, I found my phone. I personally had to tackle Dr. Amos. <laughs> so I'm going to start with Madelon's disease. It's also known as multiple symmetric lipomatosis. Some um, Europeans call it benign symmetric lipomatosis or Lenoir and food. And it's not benign. And it drives me crazy when they say benign. So this is excess fat on the face and neck, that's type 1. For women, you usually have type 2, where you have excess fat on the upper arms and on the back. And in this particular lady, she also had excess fat on her labia, her labia majora, or enlarged. And you see that in some of the lipodystrophies, so this kind of has, has an overlap with lipodystrophy. Um, there's, a, there's a thought that the fat in Madelon's disease is derived from fat stem cells that are more in the brown uh, fat lineage and brown fat, um, we all have brown fat when, now actually, we all have brown fat, about one in every 200 white fat cells, there's a little brown fat cell. And um, when you're a, a kid, you can have brown fat in your supraclavicular areas, um, down your chest, and a lot of times there's a little pad of it on the, the lower back. And that, that's why babies are so warm, because this fat burns energy and it gets released as heat. So if all of you ladies had brown fat, this room would be baking hot right now. <laughs> and in fact, um, I think it was, was it you, Dr. Stitz, who mentioned that the tissue um, can be cold. The lipidema tissue can um, be cold, so it's definitely not brown fat. But in this case, it may be, we, we don't know for sure. And it's the type of fat that can actually grow into the body. Lipidema fat does not grow into the body, but Madelon's fat can, it can grow into and around the vocal cords, it can grow into the chest cavity, it can grow around the brachial plexus nerves and cause this uh, a neuropathy. And they, they have uh, multiple neuropathies, so they can develop sudden cardiac death because their hearts just stop. They can get peripheral neuropathy where they can't feel their fingers and toes. They can get autonomic neuropathy where their blood pressure can fluctuate wildly. So again, it's not benign. And this is just a, a very old picture from 1909 of a woman who has fat lungs disease. And you can see the loss of fat on the arms and legs, which makes this look more like a lipodystrophy. And a lipodystrophy can mean loss of fat. So she's got gain of fat in some areas and loss of fat in other areas. A lot of times it's uh, linked to alcohol use. Um, and in this case, this woman did drink alcohol, but I have had patients who have never touched alcohol and they still develop mad lungs disease. So there is some recent data, um, you know, 2012 isn't that recent, but remember we're fat disorders, there's going to be a lot of publications now, my fat will change. Uh, so there's a case report of a transformation of the fat of Madelon's disease into a liposarcoma in a woman with breast cancer. Now this is extremely, extremely rare. Um, to my knowledge, none of the fat disorders can change into cancer. So I don't think you guys have to worry about that. Um, it, it's just super, 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 super rare. And I think this woman, she already had breast cancer. So she already, um, her body already had a, the propensity to develop cancer. It may be that she had a tumor uh, suppressor gene that wasn't working well, so cancers were running wild. 
So, but I just wanted you to see that in the literature and I didn't want you to get scared. There's also a, a new publication where mammalian fat can accumulate on just the limbs. And this is an unusual one where it's, it's only on the palms of the, hand, the, the hands, right here at the base of the, the fingers. And here's a, a blow-up um, MRI of the fat pads that are shown right here. So um, really, it's a really unusual disorder. It can happen just on the tongue. Uh, and it can happen just on the forearm, so the people look like Popeye, and, and it would just be really great to figure this one out. And then there's another publication showing that madelon fat cells are larger than normal. So you can see on the right there that they looked at uh, madelon fat tissue, and the, the size of the cells here is much larger than in normal fat tissue. And that's going to be important later, so remember that. <coughs> So here's familial multiple lipomatosis. This is multiple lipomas or angiolipomas. It occurs in families. They pass it down in an autosomal dominant manner, which means that if you are, have FML, you have a 50% chance of passing it down to your child. And that's similar to Durkheim's disease, and it's probably also similar to lipedema as well. Uh, the lipomas generally don't hurt. Uh, when they're growing, they feel a itch or they can feel like a pop. And you guys, I know you guys have felt that. You feel a pop in your tissue and you go, ooh, what was that? And then the next day you're like, ooh, now there's a new little growth area there, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, they, these guys get the same thing, but, but they don't have pain after that. Um, some, they, there's one family, I shouldn't say some. One family has been reported to have neuropathy with familial multiple lipomas. One was reported to have multiple nevi, but most just have lipomas that don't hurt. Every once in a while, someone in the family can suddenly develop horrendous pain, brain fog, muscle pain, neuropathy, and we call that Durkheim's disease. The only treatment that I know of is, although I use some medications out of the box, um, and I'm kind of work trying to figure out to see if they work yet, um, but the only treatment I know of is surgical excision, or you could use liposuction as well. Um, if the entire lipoma is removed, they tend not to recur. But if you feel throughout the subcutaneous fat tissue, all the fat tissue has changed. So every area of that subcutaneous fat tissue can form another lipoma. So another lipoma can grow just right next to where that lipoma was removed because the inflammation generated in the excision itself can stimulate the fat tissue to grow. So I always like um, surgeons to make really small incisions, but surgeons really like a wide field to look around in, so it's kind of hard to get them to cooperate. <laughs> you know those surgeons. <laughs> um, there are multiple reports out there all over the internet of people using salts, called Schussler salts, or bioflavonoids to reduce lipomas, um, but really we need clinical trials in order to figure that out. So there's a recent, FML is one of the most neglected fat disorders, because it really doesn't hurt, it's just unsightly. When you remove the lipomas, it really is for cosmetic purposes in most cases. Um, so I really uh, wish we could figure this out. Um, but nobody, nobody, nobody's looking at it to my knowledge. So they did this uh, oral glucose tolerance test, which is something that we use for diagnosing people with IBS. You take 75 grams of sugar, you get your blood drawn, you drink the sugar down, and then they draw your blood at multiple time points. And then they calculate the area under the curve, or they see if your sugar rises above a, a certain level at a specific time to see if you're at risk for diabetes. So they looked at this family that had FML, they compared them to uh, BMI matched control subjects. And it, it turns out that um, even though these people had tons of lipomas all over their body, they weren't insulin resistant. So this excess fat that they had didn't put them at greater risk for diabetes. So this fat is very special fat. It's like healthy fat. It's like lippy fat. Lippy fat is gynoid fat, so it's female fat. It sucks up sugar and fat like nobody's business. Keeps your arteries free and clean of uh, cardiovascular disease. Keeps your blood pressure nice and low unless you gain weight. If you gain weight, if you gain obesity weight, you are at risk for developing metabolic syndrome and developing it fast. See, I'm still coming, I'm coming back to lip <laughs> Okay, so I had a young, youngish man come see me. 
Um, he was 44 years old, very physically active, loved to like work out and work out really, really hard. Um, he had a full-time job, he had a family, he was very busy. He had multiple lumps all over his body. And his, uh, when they removed his lipomas, they were actually lipomas, so um, lumps of fat, and also angiolipomas. So I diagnosed him with familial multiple lipomatosis with angiolipomas. And angiolipomas are not lipomas. They're not fatty growths. They are actually malformations of the vasculature. So he has a vascular disease. He does not, and he has some fatty tumors, but really the angiolipomas themselves are not fatty tumors. And interestingly, he complained of arm and leg swelling with the worst swelling in his left arm. So we know that lymphatics arise from the venous system. So the question arose as to whether he had lymphatic dysfunction as well. So I sent him to uh, the Cleveland Clinic. He saw the nuclear medicine physician, and the nuclear medicine physician said, what are you doing here? And he looked at his legs, and he said, you don't need a lymphocentigraphy exam. I don't know why this doctor would order this on you. Um, you're not, it's going to be normal. Like, you know, we'll do it. You know, she ordered it, but I don't know why. It was kind of, kind of, who is this quack of a doctor? <laughs> Herbs. Hmm. I don't know if I'd go back to her. So they injected 416 microcuries of filtered technetium. This is a sulfur colloid mixture. They injected it into his feet in four aliquots. So one injection in each foot, one injection in each hand, and off he went. So at 30 minutes after injection, the radio tracer did not move. Now in a normal lymphatic system, there is immediate migration of this sulfur colloid. Boom, starts moving right away. 30 minutes later, it had not moved. You can imagine the doctor going, hmm, did, you, did we inject that right? Should we inject some more? <laughs> this is weird. At 60, move, 60 minutes, there was movement of tracer in the legs and the right arm, but not in the left arm. So an entire hour has gone by and that tracer has not moved. And at 120 minutes, finally, there was the expected normal distribution of the tracer. And I'll show you what that looks like. So this, this, in this guy, this is the first demonstration of lymphatic dysfunction in a man with familial multiple lipomatosis with angiolipomas. And I put him on dextroamphetamine, and his swelling has much improved. He's so happy. He came back and he just, when he saw me, he started crying. <laughs> He's getting his life back, which is great. So here are the pictures. Um, so here's the injections in the feet and the hands. You can see the outline of his body. And now we're at 60 minutes, so 30 minutes. So we're not even looking at this. They just ignore these because you're just going to see the same picture over and over and over and in the beginning. So here we are at 60 minutes, and you can see that the tracer has moved up into the groin nodes on both sides. And on the right arm, it's moved up into the axillary area. Maybe, maybe there's something there, but, but not much. Not enough for them to call. And then by 120 minutes, you can see all the lymph nodes. Um, in the expected distribution. So we're going to break this up as a case report because it, it definitely validates familial multiple lipomatosis as a vascular and lymphatic disorder. So I thought that was pretty cool. So lipedema, you guys have all heard about lipedema. <laughs> you might know a little bit about it. Probably more than I do. Um, I'll just say, I'll go to the last line. So I talked to Peter Mortimer when I was over in London, and he said, um, well, now we think that lipidema is not a, a monogenetic disorder. It's not a single gene. It's a polygenetic disorder. And so now what they're doing is they're gathering as many women with lip, and they're collecting DNA, and they're going to compare as many women with lip as they possibly can to the normal population to find the gene. And I said to him, hurry up. I told you two years ago, hurry up. <laughs> hurry up. He's retired, but he's doing research, which is good. So the lymphatics and lipedema, some of you may have already seen this, um, but um, if you look early on um, at the flow of lymph in women with lymph, it's actually normal. And sometimes it's actually faster than normal because the you know, lymphatic system has got all this fluid in the tissue and it's really working hard to to get all that fluid out of there, which means that the original problem in lipidema can't be the lymphatics, right? It can't. 
they might poop out earlier than in other people, but something else is going on to cause them to work so hard. Later on, they can become slower uh, and less visible, and they can become asymmetric. Even though your legs look perfectly the same, you may have a problem more in one leg, and it's just causing this, the similar problem in the other leg. And it would be good to figure, it'd be good for every woman with lipidema to have lymphocytography. Every woman should have it. You, you would want to know what your lymphatic system looks like. Every woman should have it. And as it progresses, these little microaneurysms appear. So here's a lymphatic vessel, and see these little bulges out here? Those are microaneurysms. That means that the lymphatic vessel just, it's wearing out, it's starting to stretch, and pretty soon it's gonna pop. And when it pops, it's gonna leak. 